Hey there, it's Bootso in here. This is a Beko WM85135LW. I did a few tests on it and I came to the conclusion that the circuit board's dead, the motor worked fine, I put new brushes in it, and so on and so on. Then I hot wired it for maximum fun and, you know, didn't do anything with it, I stripped the ballast out. But then I thought I'd really like to fix that circuit board. So over here, and the noise in the background is the AEG washer dryer testing away. It's just doing a wash. I know the wash will work, it's the dryer that's dead, but that's a different project. Over here on the bench, I've got my AVO meter and I'll configure that now to do, let's get that ready for DC over to resistance. I just want to test continuity. So if there is continuity, you see the, the gauge will spike. Um, let's turn it down a bit. So the gauge will spike if there's continuity, I'm not taking a reading. And then here, let's get it like that. This is the triac for this one. It's a BTB16, 600 BW. It's just a triac, a triode for AC. So it switches on and off the motor. Um, there's four relays as well, I think, here. And I think because it's not working in any direction, I don't think these relays are a problem. I think this is the problem. What should happen is that there should there, there's a little switch. If we look at the bottom of it, it might become clear. That's the bottom of it. And there's a big trace here and a big trace here. So here and here. And when this little cable, this little trace here is energized, the one on the right of the three, it joins this one and this one. So if there's power going from this one to this one, then it makes a link between the one in the center and the one on the left. So the first thing to test is that the one in the center and the one on the left are open circuit. There's something doing there, I don't know what it is. They're not quite open circuit actually. Let's turn that down. Yeah. They're open circuit, there's nothing happening there. Oh, I just slipped there, that's all that was. And then so between the one on the center and the one on the right, there's nothing. And it doesn't matter that the one on the right and the one on the left have something. So somehow I need to get a little bit of electricity between the one on the right and the one on the center. What I really want is like a 9 volt battery to push onto it, but they're all too close together. I don't even know if I could get alligator clips that close in. But I can test it upside down actually. So if I can test it like that. Somehow. Now how can I get power onto that? That's the question. Let's have a look for some alligator clamps. I don't have anything that's uh, tidy enough to get on there. Those are they're just too big. Like I can't, I can get one on one side maybe, but not on the other, without touching, that one won't stick. So I'm in a bit of a pickle then. Like, the thing is, I've, I've got parts from other machines that I've stripped off in the past, and I could just stick one of them in. Desolder it, stick one in. I guess I should test one of the other ones first, really, if I'm going to do that. There you go. It's a di it's a different number. It's BTB sixteen. This is seven hundred BW. I, I don't think it makes much difference. But I like I really don't know. I haven't checked the data sheets. But I think I could just bung one in. What I wonder about this is the way it's butted up against this aluminium heatsink. It's not um it's not actually touching it. Well, it it is touching it, but it's only relying on the springs of the legs there. It's not screwed on, which I think is kind of weird. I would have thought they would have put a screw in there. So like you can see, it is only touching at the bottom corner and the top corner. So while it doesn't look like it's blown, that may well be the problem. So I think I'm just going to waste my time and desolder that and tinker away. And you know what, before I do that, silly me, it was held in with a little metal spring. So I shouldn't have said it wasn't held in at all. There's a little clip like that that keeps pressure on it. So it didn't need to be screwed on, it was sprung into place. But what I say still stands, stand. What I say still stands. You can see the paintbrush marks for the compound on the back. 
It's only touching in two little places. Not a great conductor of heat is, you know, air. So, yeah, let's get it off and have a play with it. So this is kind of like what happened, if this is the problem, this is kind of like what happened to the, what's it called, candy washing machine a long time ago. Soldering iron is not particularly hot. It's only a little. It's taken that, it's taken that solder. So let's get into it. It's these three here. Yeah, with the candy washing machine, what happened was it was all stuck open. So whenever it tried to spin, it just came on instantly. It's not doing it, is it? Nope, it's not plumbing solder isn't going to do it. I need some of this electronic solder to get in here. So the candy was stuck open, and I think this one is the opposite. I think it's stuck shut. I think I need a bigger soldering iron. Maybe not. You'll notice I managed to bridge a gap between the two. See if that does it. It's not bad, there's a lot of heat in the heat sink behind it. It's not bad, I've got a needle nose here and I'm just gonna try and wiggle it out. Two out of three are out. There we go. That's it out. So the one I was hoping to replace it with is missing a leg. In the center it still it still has one but it's just a little bit shorter so i'll have to figure out what to do about that let's see if it'll go in yeah we'll have enough to solder onto there you can see it's sticking up just a little bit in the center it's not so bad i think i'll clip it on to hold it in place that's the clip and it just goes in one side A little bit of solder I need to clean out of the center there. That's it.
Right, so more of my nasty soldering, but the two black lines in between are intact. So it should do the job. You can actually see this closer up on the screen. I don't think I've got a great contact on that right hand one. I'll give it a little bit more heat. It's more like it, and likewise the center. And it's pretty nasty. Should be enough of a path for electricity to flow. All that heat seems to have gone straight into the heat sink. So I'll pull that off and I'll put some. I'll pull off this clip and I'll put some paste in behind it. I like these little disposable sachets of paste because I don't use this very much. Last time I used it, I think on that candy, I had to pull some off the back of the, on the back of another heat sink, which wasn't ideal, but it did the job nicely. Okay, let's get this toothpaste out. Let me squeeze. That's uh, it's much better. You see, it was put on with a paintbrush before, and you know, you'd probably just have a bucket of it beside you in a factory. Why is that not going in? There it is, clipped in, and you can see a nice blob of white all around. That's the heat sink paste, and the legs are still intact on the back. Where are they? There they are, looking grim. So we'll just stick it into the machine and see if it goes. Oh, I think I need to take out more screws. I think, I think there's a Phillips in here. Yep. Yep. Right, there we are. There's the screw. Just a screen a little polish. I'm doing this kind of for my own fun. I don't really want to sell this machine. It's missing a soap, not a soap, a filter door cover down the bottom. And so because of that, I don't really think it's a good idea to sell it. it sounds terrible. this clip on to that does it. Is it screwed on? That looks about right just sitting there. Weird. I don't remember now. Surely there was something in between them. Is it metal? touches. If the, if the metal contacts touch, that's not great. I'm 
might have been in this board here. Let's try that. Can't remember. Yeah, it looks about right. So there's a screw hole here. It seems to line, so it lines up. Okay, that looks about right. Once that's all snapped in, I've done it wrong because I haven't. I think I need to get that out. in here if you were watching this video for hope and try to how to fix something you'd be sorely disappointed at my process I'd say <laughs> right that's in and that just sits up so it does it needs that little Thing with those holes keep it apart there and there okay. that's it and it's, it locks in as well okay so we're way better there and then this little thing here engages with this knob so I have to line that up that's good I think all the plugs come in from the back then so that's us in I think right fall off on me. I know that I damaged something whenever I started this the last time. One of the clips I pulled the whole thing off the board but it should just slide back on again. Oh I guess I need to put that screw in there. It's not snapped in. Oh, it's, it's, it is snapped in. It's all right. It'll be okay. I just haven't snapped it in properly. There's a clip there. So that's the one I broke off. So that needs to go in. This one goes in here. This one goes in this way. This one clips on. Oh, I think this one clips on the top up here. Yeah. Three more. If you think it's difficult to see, it's the same down this end. Okay, that's it. All back together. Just have to get in from below and do that motor. Am I going to bother screwing it back together? This has to snap in somehow as well on the bottom. Because these tabs have to go in on the top as well. That's it actually. Oh, this one's not in. And I took off the, it wasn't this one actually, it was a different one, but I took off the condenser as well, so I'll get that back on. I'll just do all that and we'll test it. Okay, so I've plugged it in, got the motor wired back in. Got this, oh, I've, like the reason I, I don't think I'd ever sell it now is because I've left it outside for a few weeks, so it's pretty rough. Are we going to get lights on? Yeah. Um, I don't have any water connected to it. So a spin will tell us if it's working. Start. It's a pump. I don't think there's any water in it. If it doesn't turn straight away, nothing's happened. Could be that the relay that I put into it was also broken. I did hear a relay clicking on there, but I have a feeling nothing's happened. I'm 
Nothing seems to be happening. So I think this one has a date with the brick. We know the motor works because we put new brushes in it and tested it. It could be one of the relays that was suggested in the comments. I don't see anything happening. One, two, three. That's it. Nope. Oh, had I actually got it turned on? Yeah, the pump. The play light's flashing. I don't know what that means. Does that mean it's working? Does that mean it's not? What if I press and hold these two? C on. Does that mean the lock? Yeah, so that's how you turn on and off the lock. It's pretty obvious, really. Oh, we're getting end lock. Maybe I did cancel it by um, pressing that button. I don't really know what's happened now, but I certainly know it hasn't hasn't done any spinning. Okay, that's a disappointment. Um, that's life. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you later. So just when I was about to tear it down again and put it back to the hot wired configuration for brick destruction, I noticed I hadn't put this board back in. And I have now, so I don't know if that makes any difference, but I presume it does something. And I don't know what that would be, so let's put it on to spin. Press start. Is that anything going to happen? We're not even getting a pump this time, so the door's not closed. There's the pump again. Still nothing. Thanks for watching, see you later.